Hey everybody, it's Hexa, and today's video is going to be another video on the topic of mental health. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I've been getting a lot of lemons, my anxiety has been off the charts, and I haven't left my house unattended in two weeks. So, life has been pretty shitty, but I'm going to take that as an opportunity and use my experience uh, to hopefully help some other people out there who are suffering with anxiety as well. If there's someone in your life who is suffering with anxiety, whether it is your child or your parent, your friend, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, co-worker, whoever, uh, this video is for you. As my anxiety gets worse, I have been noticing the people in my life getting frustrated, getting upset not really knowing how to react, what to do, or how to help. And that's really sad to see. I don't want to upset the people that I care about. Obviously, I don't want to disappoint anybody. So I thought this would be a great video to make to give you an idea of what my needs are and what the needs of a person with anxiety typically probably is in those kinds of situations where, you know, you're trying to help them, and you don't know how. I feel like that that whole like sentence or paragraph, whatever, was like super rambly, but <laughs> hopefully you are getting my point. The idea is just that if you're dealing with someone who has anxiety and you're trying to help them, I hope this video can shine a light on their needs and can help you feel less alone as a person who is helping or trying to help. So yeah, without further ado, here are six ways to help somebody who has anxiety. Number one, realize that you can't help. That sounds really harsh. That's probably not what you wanted to hear. Believe me, the video gets better from here on out, but this is a really important one. They don't know how to fix it, so you can't know how to fix it. Sometimes not even their therapist knows how to fix it. So do not feel frustrated, do not feel helpless or hopeless or useless. The fact that you are there and you love them, you care for them, you understand them, or you're trying to understand them, you're being patient with them, that matters the most. That is what really can help them and uh, that is the way that you can support your friend or whoever this person is in your life. For as long as people have been around, anxiety has probably also been around, and it's been hundreds of thousands of years, or millions, I don't even know, of our species existing on this planet, and nobody has found a cure for anxiety, so do not feel that you need to be the cure. If this person has severe anxiety, they're probably already seeing a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, they might be taking medication, they might be doing some other things to help themselves, and a lot of the times not even those things work, not even seeing a professional will work, or at least it will take a long, long time to work, or even to make a slight difference. So this is the most important thing, because I know and I can see in the people around me how frustrating it can get when you don't know how to help a person that you care about deal with or manage their anxiety. There's no point getting hot and bothered and flustered and upset because you can't figure out how to fix it. Nobody knows how to fix it, and that is okay. It's Anxiety is a figuring it out as you go along kind of process. It, it'll get better eventually, and you don't have to be the one who finds the solution for them. Number two is to have no expectations. Anxiety is really erratic. One week or one day or one hour they might be feeling super. It might be as if they don't even have anxiety anymore at all. And then another day it might come back for no reason and be ten times worse. I don't know why my anxiety even started. I don't know what makes it better or worse. So. When you see improvements, when you see them getting better, celebrate those. You are free to celebrate with them. You are free to be just happy that they are happy. But do not expect that it will stay that way because changes and improvements may not be long term. It may just be, you know, a happy little moment in a big bubble of constant chaos. When you start to expect things of them, you're setting yourself up for disappointment, you're setting yourself up for frustration. Trust me, 
A person who has anxiety has expectations for themselves. They do not need you to expect things of them in order to push themselves to get better. They want to be there for you. They want to get better. You don't need to want it for them. They are working on it every day. They are trying to get better for themselves and for you to be a better friend, to be a better partner, to be a better child, whatever. Whoever this person is to you, they are working on it for themselves and for the people around them, but you need to be patient. Change takes time and it's frustrating and y you can feel hopeless at times or you can feel like they are never going to get better, but they will. Just have faith in them, but don't expect things. Don't expect that just because this week was a good week that next week will be a good week too, because it might not be. I had a good week, I went to school every single day and I stayed in school the whole day, every day, and then the next week I didn't go to school at all and then I had another week of not going to school at all. It's unstable, it's unpredictable, and expectations are not gonna be good for the person who has anxiety or for the people around them. Number three is to have gratitude. Shift your focus from a place of expectations, which can lead to disappointment, to a place of gratitude and appreciation for the little things. Like I said in the last point, celebrate their accomplishments, celebrate the good days without any expectation that it will happen again, but just be happy that it did happen. Be glad that there was a good day or a good moment or that they succeeded in doing something that scared them. Whatever they can give you, whatever they can offer you, even if it's not much, appreciate it. Be truly grateful for it because you don't realize how much effort that took. If they agree to have you come over and spend time with them, or if they agree to go out for a walk with you, even if it's a tiny, tiny thing like that, you may not realize how much energy it took for them to do that with you. And that's what's really important, is to think about the proportional energy, the proportional effort. Don't get caught up in, you know, I'm offering them so much more than they are offering me. Because whatever they are offering you is a lot more difficult to offer than what you are offering them. It is easier for you because you don't have this disorder, you don't have this problem. So it doesn't take as much energy to offer things to other people. Try to think of it in terms of how you would feel if a rich person gave you $100 versus a poor person giving you $10. $10 is less, but it is more valuable to someone who has less. Someone with anxiety has a lot more difficulty dealing with life and doing these simple everyday things. So the fact that they are willing to do those things with you or try to do those things with you is already a really, really big effort and is a really big move on their part to try and to work on your relationship and and just to show that they are there, that they care, that they're making an effort. So yes, bottom line, in any aspect of life, be grateful, be appreciative of what people offer you, even if it's not much because you don't know what they are going through and that tiny offer of time or or any gift, any any action, anything that they do for you might be a really, really big deal to them, even if it's not a big deal to you. Number four is support, being supportive. Let them know that you are there to support them, you are there to help them in any way that you can, and that you will do so happily. Don't make them feel like a burden. They already feel like a burden. They already feel frustrated for having this problem and for letting it affect the, their relationships with the people around them. If you let them feel like they're bothering you by asking you for help, they're not going to ask you for help again because they don't want to be a burden. They don't want to disturb you from your life. They don't want to, you know, dump their shit on your shoulders. Be honest with them, be patient, and be loving. Help them because you want to help them. Help them because you care about them. Don't help them because you feel like you have to. If you're helping them begrudgingly and you don't really want to be there, they will sense it and they will not ask again. If this is a person that you truly care about and really means something to you, give it as much of your heart as you can. Don't let it drain you. Again, if you really, if you're just not in the mood and you, you don't feel that you can invest 
your care and and your positive emotions, positive intentions into helping them that day, then just tell them that you can't today, but you'll be there next time, you know? Don't go begrudgingly with a negative attitude or a negative vibe because they're going to pick up on it and they're going to think that you don't want to help them when maybe you've just had a really shitty day that day and you'd have been happy to help any other day but that one day was just not the day for you to be there to give back if you're having one of those days when you don't feel like you can give back like i said it's okay to turn them down but let them know that you will be there next time you just can't be there today that's fine but it's important that whenever you are helping them and i i know that it's difficult and i know that it's frustrating i've realized that i realize that i'm being frustrating and difficult um to deal with to the people around me but really really remember how much you care about that person really really keep that in mind that you want what's best for them and you want them to get better and you want to help them so do that do that with full positive intention don't get frustrated do not get mad at them just keep a clear head and be there number five is to be a crutch this is related to the support as well overcoming anxiety is like learning how to walk again things that were really easy before may be impossible or incredibly difficult now in the same way that someone with a broken leg needs a crutch Someone with anxiety needs a friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or it's a person, a safe person, a loving person who is there for them. A really helpful thing that you can do is to take them out to do things that scare them. Don't force them and leave space for them to say no. Don't let them feel like they're disappointing you by saying no or by turning you down, but just leave that option open. Leave that offer on the table. Say, hey, do you want to try to maybe go shopping today. I know that you're scared of going shopping or you don't really want to or it's gonna be unpleasant, but do you wanna maybe try and I'll go with you and I'll help you so that you maybe don't feel as uncomfortable. So yeah, that's the bottom line is accompany them to do the things that they're afraid of, whether it is just leaving the house or going to the supermarket, going to the mall, taking the subway, whatever it is that they are really struggling to do and whatever it is that is one of the reasons behind their anxiety or a big trigger for their anxiety, do that thing with them. That allows them to face their fear in a slightly more controlled environment. They feel that they have more control because they are with a safe person who they trust. So if anything happens, they're not alone. And slowly that can really, really help them to gradually become more independent and maybe be willing to try to do those things by themselves. Number six, and the last thing on this list, is to remember who they are, not who they are right now. One of the biggest fears that I have as a person with anxiety is that the people I love are going to abandon me because they get too frustrated or they lose hope or they lose patience and they think that they're not gonna get the old me back. The prospect of losing the people I love to my anxiety is terrifying and i hate that thought i hate that possibility so if someone in your life has anxiety realize that this is a very big fear for a lot of people that they're going to lose you that you know their their boyfriend or girlfriend is going to dump them or their parents are going to kick them out of the house or their friends won't want to hang out anymore those are very real fears and you know it's just one more thing to think about. It's one more thing to be afraid of, to be, to, to feel stressed out about. And, you know, I really feel sometimes like there's a timer on my recovery time, you know, like I have to get better within one month or this person is going to lose patience and they're, they're not going to want to deal with me anymore. But when there's somebody in your life who is dealing with anxiety and who is suffering, realize that that is not them. That is not them. They are not this person. They are not their anxiety. Most people who have anxiety feel that it is alien. It is foreign. It is something from the outside. In truth, it is a mental thing. It is an inner thing. But it really, really feels 
like it's on the outside. It's it, it doesn't feel like it's a part of them at all. When I had depression really badly for a long time, that felt kind of different. That felt a little bit more integrated into me, into my personality. I'm not sure why that is, but with anxiety, I definitely feel like it is on the outside, like it's a, it's a veil, it's, you know, a bubble that's around me. It's not something that is me. Think about and remember every single day who this person was before they had anxiety. The real them has passions, not fears. The real them has dreams, not nightmares. That part of them is not dead. It's dormant. It's just taking a break. You know, they're, they're kind of like being, their, their true self is being contained by this disorder but it's still in there and it's still trying to come out. So don't give up on them just because they've changed. They have the full capacity to become the person that they once were, to become brave again, to become sociable again, to, you know, be back to normal. It's a matter of time, love, and care. And it's really important to be there, be part of that journey and help them, really, really help them. and. Have faith in them and and believe in them. It's really, it really is like an evil force from the outside has invaded their mind, you know? And it's a constant struggle, it's a constant battle, and the more loving and caring people I have in my life to help me with that and to understand that, the happier I feel. Maybe I still have anxiety and maybe I still won't leave my house, but at least I feel happier, at least I feel supported. Suffering from anxiety or panic attacks is basically a constant struggle between your logical brain, which knows that, you know, there's nothing physically wrong with you, you're not in an unsafe space, that everything is fine, that nothing is going to happen to you here. And then there's the sympathetic nervous system, the amygdala, the adrenal gland, all these little things and systems and organs that are pumping you full of adrenaline when you don't need it, that are making you overthink things when there's nothing to think about. Um, it's a battle. It really is an internal battle. Um, it's very difficult, but it's, it, it, can, it can get better. So if there's one thing that you should remember in all of this, whenever you have moments of doubt, whenever you get really, really frustrated and you feel like you want to abandon this person, is to remember that it is your loss if you do. If you once loved them or really enjoyed their company or loved who they were as a person, but now they've changed and you don't want to be there anymore, they're not the same person that you fell in love with or they're not the same friend they were when you first met, realize that if you leave, it is going to hurt them, it is going to be difficult for them to deal with that loss of a person they cared about, but they will still get better and they still have the capacity to get better and the thing is that if you leave them in their time of need, you're not going to be able to be there to reap the reward of them overcoming their anxiety, which they will they will overcome their anxiety. And I can't say how long it will take. I can't say how long I will take to get better. But I know that I will. And I know that I'm worth it. I'm worth the love and care and the attention that I'm receiving right now because everybody has bad days, bad times in their life. Everybody needs support at one time or another in one way or another. So there we go, that was six tips on how to help somebody who has anxiety. I hope this video was informative and helped you out and helped you understand um, this disorder a little bit more from the perspective of somebody who has it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I would be happy to answer them as best I can. If you have any friends who have anxiety or any people in your life who have anxiety, let them know that you are there for them. If you know anybody who would benefit from seeing this video, please share it. I just really, really want to create more awareness because this is a real issue and it is just as real as having a broken leg. You may not see it, but it's there and it's just as difficult to deal with. If you have any more questions of... Thank you, let me, I'll come in a few minutes. <laughs> she brought me ice cream <laughs> in the middle of my video.
I have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> If there are any other videos you would like me to make on this topic or on the topic of mental health, specifically anxiety and depression, because those are the ones that I know best, um, please let me know in the comments again because I love hearing your suggestions, I love getting ideas from you guys, and you know, I just, I just want to help. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more, and you can donate to my Patreon down below to support me and my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!